Please welcome back Miguel Gomez. Thank you. So yesterday we, we talked a bit about the, the project overall. Um, I thought maybe today we could talk a little bit about um, just in, in more detail about how you turn these real life stories into, into fiction. If you could maybe say a little bit about each one of the three stories in volume two and what they were originally and, and, and what you did to them. Can okay. we maybe we'll start with um, Let's start with the most complicated one, the judge. The judge was the last uh, story we have shot <coughs> in, the, in the stories we have shot in Portugal. Because there's the last one uh, shot in France, which is the story with Charazad that comes in the next volume. And uh, this was the last one, but the stories that we have shot in Portugal the last one is the story of the judge. And uh, in fact, it looks very one of the most absurd uh, stories, no? And, uh, but in fact, everything in it is real. I mean, there is not this uh, lie detector machine. He's uh, only a friend of mine. There is not that in, uh, in the courts in Portugal. Is, uh, he's a filmmaker, not a, 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 li a detector lying machine. But uh, all these crimes occurred in Portugal. Uh, so as it was the end of the process, it was like a, a compilation of very absurd crimes that happened in Portugal du during the period of... Uh, of, uh, of the we we worked in the in the film. Um, I personally I really like that crime of <laughs> uh, someone that stole the I don't even know how to say this in English to the the this system to put water in the pitch of a football stadium. Uh, I don't know how you can steal such a thing, you know. To, it's tubes, and uh, I mean, uh, it's uh, it must uh, it lots of work to steal. Uh, and for instance, steal 40 cows that happened to in Portugal, but Portugal is not like Texas, you know. So it's smaller, and uh, we have less cows. And to steal lots of cows in Portugal it's kind of uh, visible. So how this country uh, can afford to, uh, to be much smaller than Texas and to have uh, thieves that uh, steal cows like this. And it's, uh, I think it's not the, the type of crimes we had before the crisis. So it got a little bit more desperate, I, I think. And of course, the episode that uh, the thing, the the story that uh, was the st the starting kick for this uh, for this uh, segment was that uh, there was really a judge that was not capable of uh, uh, saying the verdict the, because she started to cry, and uh, uh, we thought it was. Uh, in, we liked a lot this idea of uh, ending uh, a segment, a uh, story of Sharazad with a, with a judge that was incapable of doing her job. And so we thought about uh, a film that would start as a comedy and with the accumulation of, uh, of crimes, she would get more and more desperate. And, uh, with the tools, the rational tools, the laws that she had, she would start to 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 lose these uh, tools, and she would get emotional. And uh, and um, the first section of uh, this sort of folk hero character, Sima without bowels. It seems to me that the film 
collectively on a whole engages like many different types of genres and, and that one seems to be your kind of Western of a Yeah, sort. it's the, the Western possible in Portugal, which is, just as I said before, not like Texas. Uh, but uh, uh, this was a very well-known story that happened because this thing of someone that was escaping from the police for, uh, I don't know, I think it was like uh, five weeks or six weeks, and uh, uh, without getting caught. And then when he got caught, even if he killed uh, two women and he shot against his own daughter and his former wife, he was received with uh, applauses because uh, of the fact that he, he, he achieved to escape from the police. So he was like, he became a myth. And so this contradiction be, uh, between uh, the moral behavior of uh, this uh, character and the way he was transformed into a myth, uh, I, th I thought it, w it uh, meant something about uh, Portugal nowadays. It, uh, it was meaning, meaning of meaning of meaningful, meaningful, and uh, and so I thought I should uh, shoot this this, uh, and we talked yesterday <coughs> about uh, this clash or this complementarity between reality and the imaginary, and so I thought that in this uh, episode the fantasy or the imaginary would appear in precisely in a very desolate way, a desolated way, because even the fantasy in this episode, it's uh, quite uh, sad. I mean, this, he, of course, you have this character that cannot, I mean, is, is, is in a Portugal that looks a little bit like Mad Max, there is no Society is alone, of course, is, is escaping, is an out, uh, not law. Um, and uh, is, I guess he's imagining things because it doesn't make any sense that he's uh, uh, with these uh, uh, ladies and uh, eating so much because I think he's, in the end, you see he's angry, you know. He, is caught and is eating his last. Is uh, uh, eating beans before uh, accepting to be brought in j into jail. So, but he can imagine things, and their fantasies are kind of sad and uh, disturbed, uh, in a way. I mean, I think so. This it's called the. I don't know. I don't recall the, exactly the name of, of the of it in English. I think it's Chronicle of Escape of uh, Simon Without bow, Balls, and uh, if it's not the Chronicle of the Escape, it's like it's the Chronicle that is escaping. It's not only him. It's like uh, I think he's. Uh, it's it's uh, his mind is drifting because it's, you can see him in a scene where he's uh, talking to him to himself doing this uh, con game of, uh, of cards and uh, and so every time in every film we try to uh, uh, have the fantasy attached to the story that gave birth in reality to the each segment the, to be uh, the right fantasy so it's it's not the same as in another segment it's not always the same kind of fantasy it changes all the time too okay and so finally the story of, of Dixie and the this tower mm -hmm. block which I understand was inspired by a real story of a couple who killed yeah, also a real story that's the the building you see in the film it's the building where maybe six months before we have shot that uh, a, a couple uh, committed suicide a middle-aged couple committed suicide has committed suicide in that building 
and uh, and they had this dog, and there, there, so there was really in what happened in the real story, you had this middle-aged couple that uh, committed suicide and gave the dog to another couple from uh, another building nearby, uh, and this other couple they were are drug addicts or ex-drug addicts, it's not uh, too clear. And uh, and so these guys were trying to sur survive and they really w needed to go to that place you see in the film. It's a place where you you have charity, so they, they sometimes they would go there to receive some food. And so uh, I didn't want to give away the reasons why this couple committed suicide. One, because I, I, I cannot do it, because I don't know. Two, if I knew, I would not do it, uh, too. Uh, what I want to, to, for me, what was important was to show these suburbs of Lisbon. Uh, and uh, for me, wh whatever are the reasons that led this couple to commit suicide, to do this uh, thing which is very radical to do a uh, suicidal pact. Uh, I think it's attached to the place where they live, and so what I can do is to show that place. But I thought, you know, it's a little bit. Uh, it's not easy for me to shoot six months after a real event like this to shoot in this place. So. Let's involve all the the people that live in this building, and let them tell the stories about stories of this building, stories that they lived or that they know about their neighbors, and let's ask them to play the, themselves, their neighbors, and this is what you get to see in this uh, middle section, in this the third segment where you have the stories of the uh, people that live in this uh, building. And of course you have the dog. And the dog is the main character. And it's the... I think it's the only character in this, uh, these three stories, in this volume, that uh, is okay. He's, uh, he's okay because he's a dog. And so he's not aware of, uh, of uh, what is happening uh, around him. And he's like, uh, so he's so happy as he, he was in a, if he, he, he was in a Walt Disney film from the 70s, he would behave the same way. And so people in the other characters of, in the film project this idea of happiness in this dog because he's, yeah, he's really cute. Is a Walt Disney kind of dog, <laughs> and uh, and so, uh, in, for instance, in the first volume, you had a cockerel very conscious of, uh, of things, and they tried to to talk with humans, and uh, in this segment, you have a, an animal, a dog, that uh, is the opposite; is not aware of nothing because it's like a dog, uh, a doggish dog, is a dog, only a dog. And you won the Palm Dog Prize at the Cannes Film Festival. For this yeah, program. we gave him the congratulations. I think he's happy for that. Um, what, what for you is the sort of ideal way for viewers to experience this three-part film? In Cannes, it showed like every other day. Here, we're showing it on consecutive days. Um, it's also been shown like, you know, and as a six hour plus chunk, what do you, what for you is the ideal way? We think it's uh, Arabian Nights. So in the book, Sherazad, she tells the s stories uh, to the king every night. So it's 24 hours of, uh, you know, pause between uh, uh, telling stories. So. I think you did the the right way here. It's the good way. But uh, who am I to say what's the good way? Anyhow, there are three films. 
the three films, they built this big film called Arabian Nights. And f if people start by the second, and if, or, or f by the last one, or uh, it's always a, a, diff a different experience. And uh, I don't think this is uh, bad. I think it's good. Uh, though I've th designed it with first volume, second one, and third one, and I think it's best for people to see the three films in this order. In a way, ha having these pauses, I mean, not seeing the three films in a row, because uh, as I, I think I said yesterday, uh, I don't know, uh, it's like having three meals because each film is conceived like uh, uh, a complete meal if we do this uh, parallel with uh, eating. Uh, but, uh, and so three meals in a row, it's quite, it's a little bit uh, too much, no? But uh, uh, I think it's good, you have still the memory of the previous film, but as it's uh, already a new cinematic experience. I think it's good you start from zero uh, with the sensation of seeing a film, but with the fresh memory of the film uh, before. But what the hell, uh, people are free and that's good to see only one or the three in a row, Ooh, I don't care. All right, we'll take some <coughs> questions from the audience. Yes? Question is about um, the multi-part structures of your films and what attracts you to them. I think if you have uh, these uh, films that have uh, segments with different rules and different moods, it's more up to the viewer to do the to to put them to, together i mean it's 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 i think that the, the 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 viewer can participate on the film on a higher level because uh, you know it's very unfair uh, this uh, relation between a viewer and the film because you're sitting there and the film is doing everything and you so you're very passive uh, the 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 condition of a viewer is very passive. And uh, sometimes this can be a problem because uh, sometimes films are very pushy. And uh, so how to give more power to the viewer? I think this is, is fair, that the viewer can have a little bit more power and so can participate in a more uh, not so passive way. And for me, for instance, when it, we have a, f a film with with uh, different parts. It's a little bit to the viewer to do the uh, ensemble, to do the to collect the pieces and do the puzzle. And this seems to be a more fair place for the viewer. Some people think it's too demanding. I, I I'm also a viewer, so I, I don't agree with that. So I think it's more uh, it's better to be a viewer if you can be more active. It's the people that made the film with me. And uh, sometimes I say I, and sometimes I say we, because uh, uh, maybe I'm not so good expressing myself. But uh, it's always we. Sometimes I say I, but uh, it's, yeah, you're right. It's we. Taboo, I think uh, it's, uh, well, I don't know if uh, people, you have seen Taboo two times, I don't know if other people have seen uh, Taboo, so I don't know if it's fair to answer this, because I don't know if other people saw Taboo, so this will be very abstract to them, but I can answer you, of course, uh, uh, and the Taboo, it's two parts, it's like, uh, uh, 
you see the first part in Lisbon and with these characters. And I think when you see the second one, the part in Africa, it's not the same as if you have seen, if, if this part never existed or if you change the two parts, it's, it's uh, completely different because when you get to the part where with young people, that's say to the sexy part of the film, so the sexy part is completely uh, wor was worked for the first one uh, because of the first one. So you get to see young people get having fun, and at the same time you have already seen these people dying before. So it changes completely the experience of seeing the film. And uh, and I, I think that uh, there is the first part, there is the second one. They are very different, you know. They look different. The things that happen are almost the opposite. Uh, but it's the viewer that makes a third part. And the third part is the combination between the first and the second. That means when the viewer is seeing the second one, is also remembering the previous one. So the third part doesn't exist on the screen, it exists on the viewer's mind because he has the memory of what he has seen before. And this is why I was talking about uh, the viewer being more active uh, uh, because he's working, he's, uh, he's putting together two parts uh, that are not uh, together, that they, they don't happen at the same time. They only happen at the same time in the viewer's mind because he, he can remember what he has seen uh, one uh, uh, half an hour before. I'll repeat in case people didn't hear, the question is more or less uh, whether you would like to see other directors sort of replicate this method, um, other directors from other parts of the world. Yeah, I will not charge uh, any rights uh, if the there was I think there was even a moment before making the film where we thought okay this idea of uh, having a team of journalists research, researching stories and then trying as uh, we trying to uh, build some fiction from these uh, facts uh, we could do it like in a TV series and uh, sell them to uh, say to try to see if in Greece they could uh, have a director to do the same and in Spain and uh, in uh, Ireland and so the the, the countries that were affected uh, in a more uh, larger way by the crisis each one of us could do like an episode each week so every month four countries could do uh, stories uh, for, for, for uh, Sherazad tales, Sherazad's tales uh, telling the, what was happening in their countries. And uh, so, yeah, I don't, uh, I, I would be glad to see that, but I'm not sad if it doesn't happen to I'm almost I'm cool with uh, with uh, many things we can take a final question if there is one uh, yes it's because of the Oscars Did people hear that it's a okay. it's it's this is why the film is is the Portuguese uh, proposal pr for the Oscars I think, I don't know, uh, it's, uh, I mean, Arabian Nights says this, uh, it's, I'm very, I'm much more pudic than uh, in the book. The book is a very hardcore uh, rock and roll <laughs> thing. Uh, me, I try to put uh, some things, but uh, I'm a little bit pudic, so, uh, but there was no, no, I mean, <laughs> there was no strategy about the new the uh, segments. Uh, 
I mean, there was not like, let's put everything in the second or the hard on men. Uh, the hard on men, it's about, uh, it's about power. It's not, uh, so it's less uh, uh, sensual, I guess. Uh, but uh, and here, yeah, we had Brazilians. We have the the daughter, yeah. And but this uh, and th these prostitutes, or I don't know what that. Uh, but that's not so sexy too. I think uh, I don't know. But people have different tastes. Um, it's up to to each one of us. Um, but what the question was, uh, what? from our dirty minds uh, but uh, for me uh, it was very important to show uh, these women that were uh, a woman like the character of the judge that is capable of controlling everything uh, I mean she's it's not her her she that is controlling the the orbits of the three moons you see in the in this segment but almost so she controls everything about uh, her daughter even when she's lo losing uh, virginity and she gives uh, good recipes uh, for baking cakes and uh, she's supposed to control everything she 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 has the power to co to put everything in order or her order of course because there is not one good order and uh, but she fails she fails and uh, so the her daughter apparently doesn't uh, achieve to to bake the cake she doesn't uh, uh, achieve to to put order in this uh, arena and so it's like uh, it's like that <laughs> Okay, um, to be continued. Um, we hope to see you back tomorrow. Thank you for coming. Thank you, okay. Miguel. Thank you very much.